What is the put-call parity and why should you care? First of all, put-call parity is simply the relationship between puts, calls and an underlying. In my case, I take equities. I was an options market maker for equities. So that's a simple relationship. But why should you care? Know your weapons, avoid mistakes. Mistakes cost money and you, if you trade in options, you should know about this stuff. Otherwise, somebody else will take your money off you. Believe me. Calculate the right price in your head even. Once you understood the relationship, it should be easy for you to looking at the screen, being able to make a rough calculation what the real price should be so you're not getting screwed. Then check whether the market maker is trying to take, let's call it advantage of you. I was a market maker. I trade at the price I like, not at the price you like. You can accept that or not. But to make this decision, you have to know whether that is an appropriate price for you to trade at. Then if you don't see any markets, yeah, you bought a position, a call or a put, and you can't sell it, you were right and there is nothing on the screen. No problem for you. If you know the relationship between puts, calls and the underlying, you simply trade the other side. And my favorite point, spot if someone, evil hedge fund managers, are painting the tape. What is painting the tape? You thought somebody bought a lot of calls. In reality, they bought a lot of puts, but you didn't know about the relationship before. Now you do. Put call parity, know how in under 10 minutes. Let's get right through it. Put call parity basics, it's all the same. That's the bottom line. You will see what I mean with that when we are through this short presentation. Let's start with a simple example. I want to buy shares. I want to buy Apple stock. Yeah? So I'm long Apple stock. I've spent some money. And what will happen with Apple stock? If the market goes up, I'll make money. And if the market goes down, I lose money. So what could I do to protect myself against that? Well, very simple. I buy an insurance policy. This insurance policy will protect me to the downside. Yeah, I get compensated if my Apple stock loses money. And on the upside, well, nothing happens. If you buy house insurance and your house doesn't burn down, you also don't get any money. Excellent. So if I have these two products together, I have the stock and I have the insurance policy. What does that give me? Actually, it looks very much like a betting slip. Why is that? If the market goes up, I'll make money, right? If the market goes down, I don't lose any money. Yes, I've paid an insurance premium on the policy earlier, but if the market goes to zero, I only lose my premium and I get compensated for the loss in the share price I have. How does that look? That looks very much like a call option. And let me explain you why. Here you can see I've simply exchanged two easy symbols to represent what happens to the position if the market goes up and if the market goes down. The plus one simply means market goes up, you make money. Minus one means the market goes down, you lose money. In the second case, market goes down, plus one, you make money. And the market goes up, well, nothing really happens. Yeah, You've paid a premium for your insurance policy, but that's it. No heavy influence on your position. So if you simply add these two parts together, the plus one on the uh, on the stock side, the zero on the put side, you end up with a plus one, which is the profile of a call. You make money if market goes up. And the minus one on the stock side and the plus one on the put side compensate. Voila, zero. Nothing happens on the downside. This is a call option. So you duplicated a call option by buying the stock and buying a put. If something pays out the same amount of money, should they have a different price or should the price be the same? You can answer that. So we can do it the different way. Now you've shorted Apple stock. You really, really think this sucker is going to zero. So if the market goes up, you lose money. And if the market goes down, you make a lot of money. Good. Where do you want to have protection now? Because we've seen a lot of things happening now in markets when they crash upwards. So you want to take out another insurance policy. Yeah? But this insurance policy is now protecting you to the upside. If the market goes up, you get compensated for the losses you have on the equity side. And if the market goes down, well, you've spent your insurance policy, nothing really happens, but you make a lot of money on the side, uh, on the short side you have in the stock. If we add these together, we have a betting slip again. If the market goes up, I make nothing. I just lose my premium, my uh, insurance policy money that I've spent. But if the market goes down, I make a lot of money. Sounds very much like a put option. And here we see it again. 
I've simply reversed now uh, the minus one and plus one to symbolize if the market goes up, it's a minus one. If the market goes down, it's a plus one. That's how a short position looks like. Then we have here the call option. Yeah, I bought a call to protect me on the upside. I can still call the stock if the market goes crazy to the upside. So I make money plus one on the upside and the market goes down to zero. Uh, I only lose the premium I have invested. Again, I'm adding up the minus one and the plus one that gives a big fat zero and the plus one and the zero gives a plus one. So that is exactly what a put option looks like. To the upside, I don't lose anything. To the downside, I make a lot of money. To the upside, I only have paid the premium that disappears. I have to pay for that anyway. But on the downside, I have uh, all the profits I ever dreamed of. So if you look on the left side, we have a short stock and a long call. And on the right side, we have a put. Can they actually generate different payouts while not costing the same? No. Otherwise, some market maker would arbitrage it out of the market or everybody who can see this relationship. So they have to have the same price. You already see the relationship between a call and a put and the underlying. Third scenario is, okay, I want to be just long on the upside. I buy a betting slip, our call. In this case, the market goes up. I make a lot of money. Market goes in the different direction. I only lose the premium I've invested. Okay, premium I've invested. Hmm. The premium I've invested costs money. That's the insurance money. So what can I do? I could sell an insurance to somebody else. I could sell a put option, which means if the stock in question, the underlying, is falling, then I have to pay out the other guy for this. So what does he have to give me? He has to give me an insurance premium for that. That will compensate me for my betting slip I've bought earlier. And this is exactly as if I would hold a long equity position. Let's look at the numbers again. The call is plus one and zero. If the market goes up, I make money. If the market goes down, I'm losing my premium. The short put is now, if the market goes up, yeah, I don't have to deliver any payments on the insurance side. If the market goes down, oh, that hurts. I have to have a payout. How do I get compensated for that? Well, obviously, I get the insurance premium. And with this insurance premium, I actually bought my call option, which enables me to make money on the upside. So let's add all these numbers together again. Plus one plus zero is a plus one. And zero plus a minus one is a minus one. And you have the payout profile now of a short stock in here. So buying a call and selling a put is the same like buying a stock. Obviously, you can reverse that as many times as you like. Just twist them around. I might make another short about that to get this more established in your head. But this is a simple relationship that a call is a put, is a put, is a call, is a stock, as long as you mix and match them in the right way. And this is the right way. If you, lose, if you use uh, the little symbols I have, you simply add up the pluses and the minus. You just have to know where the zeros are, where the pluses are, where the minuses are. And it's very simple to see that because... Just ask yourself, where do I make money? If it goes up, it's a plus one. If it goes down, the plus one is on the uh, 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 is on the downside. Yeah? If you lose money when the market goes down, it's a minus one. If you lose money when the market goes up, it's a minus one on the top side. Uh, add them together and you have the combined position, which is exactly the equivalent when a call becomes a put and when a put becomes a call, simply by mixing and matching the underlying. So why is that interesting? Know your weapons. I uh, uh, said in my introduction, if you trade options, you should know what you're doing. That's part of it. Calculate the right price in your hat. That's what we're doing in the next short where I introduced interest rates. This example was only to demonstrate you the relationship we have. Check whether the market maker is trying to screw you. Yes, if you know the price, you know what the price should be you want to pay and where is the margin the market maker is taking off you. No market, no problem. Trade the other instrument. You've seen it before. You've bought a call position. The market is rallying. You're deep in the money suddenly there is no uh, uh, bid and offer on the side where you've traded the calls but the puts are being quoted fine trade the put and the underlying you've just sold the call you had in there because we replicated it through the mechanics i just showed you and then spot if some evil hedge fund is paying the tape in the first example we bought an underlying and we bought a put option yeah? We bought that same size. I bought a hundred. Uh, uh, I bought a hundred uh, equities in Apple, and I bought one contract uh, Apple puts. Okay, fine. This is exactly a call option I have there. But what do you see if you only heard about the put call ratio? Ooh, somebody's buying a lot of puts. They must be bearish on that. 
Nope, they bloody bullish on it, and they bought it. In, they bought the underlying, and they bought the put option. That was the equivalent of a call option. Once you see that and you understand it, you know where to look. You can check. Oh, how's the equity volume? There's a huge order in I don't know call options on Nvidia out there. Has somebody sold at the same time the same amount of stock that is represented by these uh, call options? Then actually, what you see on the screen, somebody just bought puts. Now you know why. And uh, next short will be put call parity with interest rates and dividends to make that a more real example. But I promise you, I've done this now under 10 minutes. I can explain the other side under 10 minutes as well. And they should be able with a little pocket calculator of your fast in your head to calculate the price on the screen. I hope you enjoyed that. Bye.